Hi, Amy the Medium here. I'm in my office today and I thought it'd be a good idea to share with you some of the tools that I use when I do a psychic reading. So I have like a big stack here, you can't really see it, but a big stack of tarot cards and oracle cards that I use on a regular basis when I do my readings. Now in a psychic reading, I am using my own intuition and psychic abilities to tap into your energies, work with your guides and your teams. So the cards that I use, I use almost as like a focus to help me work through some of the information that I'm getting. So I work with a lot of different decks, a lot of different types of imagery. Here's a deck here. It's a Oracle deck. Another one, Shamanic Healing. So I wanted to kind of go through some of these, some of my favorites and show you you know, what it is about them that I enjoy. So that said, I've already shown you two here, not um, my favorite favorite to work with, but they're a good example of what you expect when you buy one of these decks. So as you can see, I keep these in their original boxes. I also have a whole lot of decks that I keep just in bags as well. But I find with the Oracle cards, because they're shaped kind of weird, that it's easier to just keep them in their box most of these decks like i mentioned they've got their unique imagery for the cards themselves so here's the cards but they will also come with their own guidebook that has the meanings that the author intended i do recommend when you receive a deck or you buy one that you look through those books and gather what the meanings are that the author originally intended before you start to kind of go off on your own because reading about what the intended meaning is will actually help you in your readings as you see those cards come up it will trigger that what you read and the reason those cards will come up in a reading is because it's in your client's aura or it's part of the messages they need to receive that that meaning that was intended for that card will help them at that time you can also put your own spin on these images like i said um, which is something that i like to do so I have a stack of oracle cards here that I've been kind of flipping through. So let me start with those and I'll go to the tarot afterwards. One of my absolute favorite oracle decks is this one you see here. Uh, it's Oracle of Visions. And I think it's Ciro Marchetti. Ciro, I forget the Italian pronunciations. Anyway, the reason I love these is, I mean, check out the back of the cards. Beautiful. But also... Like I said, comes with a book. So there's the book. Check out the imagery on these cards. Look at that. So what I love about these cards is there's no text on them at all. So a lot of times you'll see the Oracle cards that will have like a title across the bottom. But in this case, because there's no text, you have to go straight off the imagery. And what I love about this deck is the complexity of these images. Look at this one is beautiful too. I mean, the artwork itself is just amazing, but there's such depth in every one of these images. I mean, look, you can see the Vitruvian man on his head there, the little infant there, astrology signs, chakra symbols all around there. So you get a lot of layers and depth into each one of these images. While the whole image on its own will give a meaning, I also find that when I'm doing readings and I'm using this deck that I will pinpoint certain parts of the image and just get a lot of information just from that one piece. So looking at this one that I've been showing you here, there's oh, it's a woman with a boat, a bunch of birds. There's a lot of flags trailing off behind her. So if I'm doing a reading for someone and this card comes up, I mean, again, it can mean a, a bunch of different things. The book itself has the meaning of what this card is, but it could be in that moment that I need to focus down here at the flags and that what it's telling me is that this person is going to travel internationally or that they're leaving their international life and coming to live a more domestic life. It can mean a lot of different things, but my point being, there's a lot of different pieces and parts to every one of these images that really can give you a very deep, deep reading. And um, what I love too is when I lay these out, I'll go back to each one of these cards multiple times because different things will come out as the reading continues its flow. So this is one of my absolute favorite of the Oracle cards. I should also add when I'm reading with Oracle cards, I don't have any particular way that I lay these out. I usually, again, will just 
kind of let spirit and my intuition guide me as to how these should be laid out. So here's another fave. This is the Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. So let me give you some examples here. Now this is a deck that, like I mentioned, it has the text on it that gives you part of what the author's original meaning was. I find with this deck that it actually helps. These images are meant to illustrate that meaning across the bottom there. With any reading, you're going to get more than just a simple message of, oh, there's hostilities. You're gonna need to read deeper into this and read into that energy coming from your client as to what hostilities are, are happening. Is it that they're being defensive? Are they too aggressive? Are they in a, an environment where they're having fights all the time? So there's a lot more that comes into this that you need to dig into when you are doing a reading. But this is, you know, that trigger to kind of start you down that path. This deck I actually like to read in three card sets. So I'll just lay three cards out. You can get a pretty complete picture with three cards. Something else that's really cool about when you work with different clients, what I like to do is I like to have multiple decks available for my client to work with. I will literally let my client look through all my cards. And I know there's a lot of people who don't like clients to touch their cards. They're very touchy-feely about them. I am not that way. I would love for you to put your own energy into the cards and choose the cards that inspire you because if you feel the card, then your energy is going to flow through the reading a lot better. So what I have found is depending on what deck the clients choose, I know the theme of the reading because a lot of these decks have their own personalities about them. So this one, Wisdom of the House of Night, you could probably guess by looking at the cover that this is a little bit more saucy, a little bit more dark and dangerous, if you will. There are cards that lean that way, but then there are others that are quite tame. So here's an example. This is just the moon, right? So often, you know, if you read the tarot, the moon is a lot about intuition, knowing yourself. So you can assume the same here or, you know, whatever it means for your client, I guess. Uh, maybe your client has a black cat, who knows? So there are a lot of very high concept cards in this deck that are a little bit more up for interpretation. And then there are these that seem very straightforward in your face, but they're not always that way. This one I will lay out in, in kind of a bow and arrow. I made up the spread for it. The bow gives you a lot of information that you need to know. And then the arrow gives you that forward movement. You know, what do you need to know going forward to make a change? Like I said, I made up that one, but it works for me. And the meanings of which cards are in what position is also pretty clear for me. So that's the Oracle ones. I also wanna go over some tarot cards with you. So there is a long history of the tarot, what the artwork means of each card. The Rider weight design is, is the typical standard base standard. If you're going to buy a tarot deck to start with, I would recommend Rider Waite. It's the easiest to learn from. There's a lot of books written about it to let you know the meaning of the major arcana, the meaning of the minor arcana, the story that kind of flows through those. And then also the different spreads and layouts. The Celtic cross is the, I guess, the most standard, um, but there's a lot of other layouts that you can do. And like I said, I will often make up my own layouts for these cards based on whatever the client is needing in their reading at that time. So this is one of my favorite decks. I call this the no bullshit deck. This was found by a friend at a garage sale and I have the original box, which you can kind of see here. It's falling apart like it's terrible. The reason it's falling apart is it's a really old deck. And what's great is I'll show you the artwork on it. Boom, looks pretty familiar, right? You think this is the Rider Waite artwork? Well, it's not. If it was Rider Waite, this box would say it's Rider Waite. It's not Rider Waite because this guy, De Laurence, De Laurence, however he said his name, um, total copyright infringement made this deck based on the Rider Waite, he changed the colors. So you can see the colors are all just like red and blues and grays and he changed the colors, published it under his own name and tried to basically infringe on the copyright of the Rider Waite deck. Guess what? They caught him, stopped producing this deck. So it's kind of a one in a lifetime um, find. When my friend found it, this deck had really never been used and I use it all the time. There's the back of the cards there, just pretty simple. 
These are really lightweight, very flimsy. You can see some yellowing around the edges, perhaps maybe hard against the yellow wall, but the reason for that is this deck is really old. Now, like I said, this is my no bullshit deck. It's a standard tarot deck. It has the, you know, the imagery that you're gonna find on like a Rider weight. But anytime a client chooses this deck, I know that they don't want me to be fluffy. They don't need me to read around the bush or beat around the bush. They just want me to tell it like it is, tell them the truth, say what they need to hear. So I really like these ones. I'm showing you them because they have a fun story, but also so you can see kind of what the traditional Rider weight artwork looks like. Now that said, I have purchased a lot of cards. Here's a good one. Based on the original illustrations, but they have their own little minor tweaks. I love this deck. Most people get really scared from it because they don't like the animals with the big eyes. I like the big eyes. Um, <laughs> I think they're funny. So this is one that takes a twist on the traditional rider weight imagery. So here's a good example. This is the seven of wands. The traditional artwork has a man who looks exactly the same. This one has a frog. So super cute. Usually a little woman here with the cups. Now you have a little sheep. I think they're adorable. I rarely read from these because like I said, people find that the big eyed animals are scary. So, uh, but it is one of my favorites. And this is actually one of the first decks that I ever bought for myself. There's the other side of the box. Another fun one, this one is actually, I've seen it at Barnes and Noble. This comes with a fantastic book. This is the Shadowscapes Tarot. And right here on the top is my most favorite card from the deck. This is the 10 of cups. Look at how cute that is. So this is a lot more whimsical, fantasy, a lot less traditional in the artwork on its own. So if you're looking to use the art to inspire your reading, this one is a little more difficult to do that with because it is so kind of airy fairy. So in this one, uh, what I would do if the client chooses this, they usually have just a more sweeter sensitive soul themselves, but I will go more with the traditional tarot meanings on each of these cards than I will with, you know, being inspired by the art on its own. But look how beautiful this card is. Oh, I can't believe it. I love it. So good. I'll show you a couple more decks here. I'm not going to go into all of them because that could take us all day, but I want to just illustrate to you, you know, what it can mean depending on what decks are chosen. Here we go. Look at how adorable that is. Six of cups there. Now this one, if somebody chooses this deck, I know that they have questions about romance. It's just every time. And this isn't just because, you know, I've decided that. This is patterns over time. I've had so many clients come to me if they choose this. The reading always tends to focus on romantic relationships. And it's not that I've decided that. It's just what happens. Here's my favorite image from the whole deck. I believe this is the, the image that is on the cover of the box. Look at how cute that is. Love it also lets you know why when people choose this deck romance is often a focus because this deck is has a really great energy about understanding partnerships and relationships and motivations and things like that so it's another beautiful beautiful tarot i'm just going to cover two more decks real quick and then we'll call it a day i love this one you can see it's pretty small it's in the bag right now i'll take it out this is another one i think i bought it at barnes and noble like right at the uh right at the checkout where they have those like little kits. So you can see standard tarot. This is the, the cards that I'm holding now. These cards are my travel cards. So I'll carry these in my purse with me in case there's like an emergency reading that needs to happen. Again, this one has very simple illustrations. They're pretty. I will read this one kind of like a traditional, traditional tarot deck. Don't really have a personality on this one, which is nice because I can use it for any type of reading. Whereas the other ones, you know, they'll have, I'll, I'll have a sense of what they're looking for once they choose the deck. This one is just, it's my to-go deck. So it's, it's the only option you have. But I like that one because it's small, compact, easy to travel with. So there's that one. I know I've mentioned buying decks at Barnes and Noble. I will also go to metaphysical stores to buy most of my decks. And I have bought decks online as well. There's really great online resources that you can look at some of the images of the cards before you make a purchase. So I highly recommend that. I'll show you one more tarot one here. I really like this one too. This one is cool because it has this sort of mirror image thing going on. This is so you can read reversals. 
So a lot of people will, you know, they'll lay out the cards and if it shows this way, it means one thing. If it shows this way, it means something else. I don't really read that way normally, but because this deck was designed with that double meaning in mind, that's absolutely how I will read from this deck. And this is a very honest deck as well. It doesn't lean towards career versus relationships versus home life versus health, whatever. It's very balanced in that sense, but it, it brings the reversals into play. So if the card is this way, it means one thing. If the card is this way, it means something totally different. And when I say reversals, what that usually means is, you know, there's this concept that if the card shows up upside down when you lay it out, it means the reverse of what it would normally mean if it's right side up for the most part. Not always true with every card. Like I said, I usually don't read reversals because that puts, from in my mind, it puts too much energy into the card itself when what I'm actually doing is tapping into your energies. These are just a focus that I use to get into that. So if I'm focused too much on the card itself, then you're gonna get a very different reading and probably one that's not entirely great because the person is reading the cards, not you. So here's a good one. Two of Cups, look at they love each other, how wonderful, partnership, woo! And then you flip it over and they're like, oh no, real angry, things aren't good. So this deck goes against everything I just said, it's made to be read both ways, but what's great is because the artwork is already illustrating both directions, you can still look through this and read the energy of the client that's coming through. And then last but not least, back to oracle decks like i said i've got a pretty good balance of both i think i've got <clears throat> at least 20 decks that i'm working from i should probably narrow it down um this is the fairy oracle super cute all of the artwork here has fairies on it <clears throat> this one i made up an, a spread for again i call it the river um it'll flow from well if you're watching this flow this way <laughs> uh, you know a river going downstream and i'll have some cards that are sort of the obstacles in the way that the water has to flow around, which will help me to identify, you know, where the blocks are, like I said earlier, blocks in your life. So this is another one that's got the text on the bottom. Like I said, all of the imagery here are fairies. This one is another one that's very simple. The message that you see across the bottom is the message that the card wants to portray, but you can also see a lot in the imagery here. It's not about reading into the image. Like I said, it's reading the energy that's coming through. But I did want to show you some of these examples because I find it valuable. I think a lot of people can get caught up on, I only read Tara, I only read Oracle. They don't understand, you know, the difference between the two or how they can work together. This is a small sampling of the cards that I like to work with. There are a lot more than that, but I thought it'd be a great start just to kind of show you what I work with and how I work as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, put them below um, in the comments and hopefully I will answer. And yeah, I guess if you have decks that you love too, that are your favorite, comment those as well, because I'd love to know. I have a lot more than I've shown you, but definitely I think they're just fun. Like I said, I don't work with them all the time on my readings. I will sometimes, what my favorite thing to do is, is you know, let's say I have a client, they've chosen this deck, I will have them shuffle it because like I said, I'm not very personal about people touching my things. I would love for them to, to shuffle it. They put their energy into it, right? It opens up that connection and helps us get aligned. They'll shuffle the deck. They'll hand it to me. And a lot of times I'll just sit there holding it and I'll do the reading because it's not about what's on the deck. It's about the person you're connecting with. And just the act of them shuffling and thinking about their reading has helped us to align. And I'm able to just hit the ground running and go with the reading. So a lot of times I won't even use them. I like being able to share these with clients as well. You know, they, they will often go through the imagery themselves and go, oh, this is so cute, I love it. Or they'll go, oh my gosh, this is the scariest card I've ever seen. Usually not, but it could happen. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And like I said, questions, let me know. Share with me your favorite deck and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.